All right, well, I've decided to do it. I'm going to make the video that to me, uh, at least, is proof or that what John D. and Edward Kelly did was not possible given the technology available to them at the time. Um, so I'm going to get into it. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little quick warning and then an assurance. Okay. So the quick warning is it involves math. The assurance is you won't need to do any, and I will make it as easy as possible for you to follow. So let's get into a little bit of this. And I promise I'll make it nice and gentle and you won't, you will not get lost. And if you do get lost, just let me know in the comments and I will address them. Um, but I think I've laid this out as best I can. Okay, so I'm just going to go through this one bit at a time here. So the first thing you should know is that one of the things that was transmitted to Edward Kelly, or received, or whatever, you want to, depending on your point of view, was a list of Enochian calls. This is beyond dispute at <laughs> this time he received. 48 Enochian calls. There were supposed to be 49, but one of them was supposed to be not to be spoken. So I've listed these as the spoken Enochian calls. Usually the, just the general understanding of Enochian magicians will call them this. So there are 48 of them, but I'm only listing t uh, 10 or 11 of these. 10 and 11. 5, 11. Okay. Uh, 11 of these calls right now. Uh, because these are relatively unique calls. They're all in the first 18, but they're of, of those first 18, 11 of them have these very large numbers, and seven do not. Now, I'm just going to make this point again. I'll make it, and I'll make it over and over and over again, which is that the number seven is a very big deal in Enochian, okay? Seven days of the week, God bless that seventh day to make it holy, Okay. So just be aware that as I'm going through this, there is something that, that that number will come up, okay? And another number that will come up is 19. That is if you add the 12 signs, signs of the zodiac plus the seven classical planets of antiquity, you get 19, okay? And 19 is also the square root of 361 which is the number of degrees of a circle plus one for the center, okay? That's, that's, the, that's the main thing, okay? But don't worry so much about this. This is just sort of like an aside. But you might just be curious about this and, and reflect on this in the video when it comes back up. Now, there are, as I said, there are 48 calls, and I've listed out 11 of these. And, well, what is a call? A call is what's done. It's basically a cry to the heavens or like, you know, it's sort of like a psalm in which you're you're speaking up to the heavens and you're saying this thing. And it's sort of like you have this, this long call or key that is sort of like a password. So if you look at antiquity, there were a lot of rituals where if you died, you were supposed to go to such and such a god and say such and such a password. And then you'd be given the better of the two possibilities of the afterlife. So this is seen in like the Orphic hymns. And Kristen Mathis did a really good job in a talk on this uh, recently. But at any rate, uh, this is to be done while you're alive, <laughs> not dying. But at any rate, you make these calls and then you have basically a transcendent experience. Now, this is just column one and I'm, I'm just focusing on this right now so you just sort of get the idea okay this is a call a call is this thing and it comes in an Enochian language okay so Enochian has its own alphabet and its own language with which the uh, the words are spelled out and people have made the argument that it's not actually the language or that it's a constructed language I'm like yeah but constructed by who oh well it has to be humans right well you know so but just be aware that it is totally different. You know, it's not it's not English. And some Scott Stenwick mentions that it's maybe German and some Hebrew-ish and some English. You know, just a little changes and twists on those. I don't really. I mean, it's 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 interesting and it seems to have a lot of loan words from other languages. Okay, 
but we're not going to get into what that language is. Just be advised that just the reception of a language or a set of words, and we're talking, I want to say, over a thousand words, just that in and of itself, along with um, verb endings or plural forms or stuff like that, that in, in and of itself is kind of a big deal. I know that some kids will start with, you know, creating their own language, like with twins or something like that, or there's, you know, pidgin languages or creoles or whatever the case may be. But suffice it to say that having a bunch of new words like that is a lot. Okay, so Enochian calls. I've belabored this point enough. Now, within these calls, uh, I'm only going to go over the English version, the English translation of these, so you don't need to worry about that. But I wanted to point out that this is the next big step that you need to, uh, foundational understanding that you need to have here, which is that there are some large numbers in these calls, okay? So call 18 has the number 6,332, 17 has 7,336, and so on and so forth, until we get to the really big one, which is call 5, which has the number 6,300. Uh, 69,300 or 69,636. These are big numbers, okay? Uh, if you don't believe me, try counting to them, okay? That's it's all these are big numbers. Now, just so you know what it sounds like when it's in the call, these are the English translation of these, and these are all really interesting, very biblical in a lot of ways, right? So, let me find a good one here. Uh, okay, so call 10. Uh, these be the thunders that 5,678 in the 24th part of a moment roar with a hundred mighty earthquakes and a thousand times as many surges, right? Woo! You can feel that one almost go through you, right? So, you know, it, basically there, you know, obviously this is a little bit ye olde English, but these are the thunders that you know, that, 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 you know, in their number 5,678. In other words, there are 5,678 thunders that in not just a moment, but a 24th part of a moment, right, roar with a hundred mighty earthquakes and a thousand times as many surges. So it's pretty cool, right, just in and of itself. And meanwhile, this was all received not just in this text, but in, in, in an Enochian language. This was all spelled out, okay? So it's pretty badass, first of all. Uh, second of all, you know, that's a very specific number, <laughs> okay? So it's not the, like the number 5,000 or 10,000 or, or, you know, a million or whatever the case may be. It's, it's getting down into a very specific number, you know, it's very precise. Not 5,677, not 5,679, 5,678, okay? So just be advised that all of these large numbers... There's not really that much systemization. I mean, I guess you could make the argument, well, this is divisible by three. This is divisible by three. This one, not so much. This one's divisible by three. This one, you know. So uh, not because it's, you know, doesn't the digits don't add up to something divisible by three. So at any rate, you can see here that, hmm, what is the deal with these, you know, and, you know, what, why are they in there? Why are they there in there? And so precisely, right? So that brings me to a question. It was always kind of like, well, that's a very specific number. And I didn't really understand that, but it took me a while in terms of studying this to put the different pieces of this system together. Cause it is pretty complex. There's a lot to it. And I'm like, uh, I think I published the article on this like uh, last year, and that was like after three years of pretty intensive study of this. So the question I had is like, well, where are they where do they come from? Why are they here? You know, basic questions like that. You know, is it just well that's the way it is, and some things will never change? You know, or <laughs> are we looking at something else? Are we looking at? Um, some kind of systematic reason for this. And I'm not going to claim to know why the large numbers are there or why there are so many of them, because you're about to see a much larger number of large numbers, 91 and all. But I think I have a decent understanding of how 
of, of the way that they are related and the not so much the origin of the numbers, but rather the relationships to some of these large numbers, okay? So I'm just going to turn the camera around again, and this time zoom out a little bit, and I spent the good part of last night and this morning just showing you, just clipping out all of these things. Now, you may be wondering, what is all of this? And I will answer that shortly. So these, you'll notice I have them more or less grouped according to threes, but if you're very uh, paying a lot of attention down here, there are four of them right there. So uh, a group of four down there. So these are the groups of three. Each group of three represents what's known as an aether, A-E-T-H-Y-R, or air, A-I-R-E, which is sort of the spelling of the time. And Within each of those is a part of Earth, and I have those written on the back, um, mainly just to sort of, you know, help me keep track of who is who. And the parts of the Earth are basically, are literally what it says, right? Part of the, the Earth that we live on, right? You know, so um, the idea behind this is that you could work with angels to do political magic on the earth, right? And Scott Stenwick has a book called Mastering the 30 Heirs, you know, same thing as Aethers, the equivalent name. And he talks about how to use that system for that. So use it for good, et cetera, et cetera. Be a good person, really reflect on your heart. Are you open hearted enough to actually, you know, think that you're in a good place to be able to even try something like that? That's a, that's a big question, right? But regardless, so we have 30 aethers or heirs, and this is sort of like an idea of like a heaven, right? The heavens in the 30 heavens, basically, between the earth and the divine. And then within those, there are, uh, you know, parts of the earth that are then governed. You know, each aether, you know, has three, or in the case of text, four parts of the earth associated with it that you can then try to, you know, ask the heavens to please help you in creating such and such an outcome. So what do we have? So what is all this all about? And what's with the numbers here? And what's with these names there? Because the names are not the names of the aethers. The aethers are all have three letter names. And with one exception, these names are all have seven letter names, right? So I mentioned seven, septenary nature, very much a part of this Enochian system. So I'll start with the, the names, okay? So the names on the right of each of these slips of paper is the name of an angelic zodiacal king who has authority over that part of the earth that they're assigned. It's, it's written on the back of these things. It turns out I didn't need to do that, but regardless, let's see if I can just take one simply here. Uh, this one here, it's from the Aether of Zay, and the part of the earth is Saziami. And that's the angelic name for it. And in Scott Stenwick's, Stenwick's books, he did the research to say which of those, which, you know, mundane name that we know that by. And thereby, if you were to call on the angel and ritual, etc., you could try to have a political outcome. Okay. So the angel in that case that you would call is Zeraka. And you can see right there, Zeraka. Okay. So now what's with all these numbers on the left? So these numbers on the left <laughs> are all the names of servient angels to that zodiacal king, right? So if I go down here and I'll take an easy one here, this is the uh, Aether of Lit. And you might say, why did they call it Lit? Well, I like to think this Aether is Lit. Ha 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 ha. Okay. So that's a little pun there. Lit just means awesome or excellent, you know. So the part of the earth of Nokomal would be govern, you know, the angelic name for that is Nokomal. There's a mundane name. You have to look it up yourself, do all the research. But that is governed by Alpidus and 2360, or excuse me, 2306 servient angels are under him. Okay, just like with Zingjin. 5,802 servient angels are in 
uh, are underneath Zingjen in this part of the earth. Now, for those of you who know a little something about astrology, you'll know that there are 12 signs of the zodiac. So that means, and if you've even looked at this list here, that means that there are, <laughs> you know, if there are 91 parts of the earth and only 12 signs of the zodiac, how do they, you know, how does this work? Well, basically, each king more or less has multiple kingdoms or part of the earth that, over which they have authority, right? So um, the minimum number is uh, four, but there are some angels, some uh, zodiacal kings that actually have more authority than others. So in this case, right, like uh, Arfeolge, let me see if I can find, there we go, Arfeolge right here, 9200. Uh, Arfeolge sh shows up, but even within this Aether of Maz, you see Jebabal is there twice, okay, or Jebabal, I'm not sure how you pronounce that off the top of my head. But regardless, you see that, you know, when it comes to, you know, Jebabal, he uh, operates over the part of the earth which Angelic is known as Zirzird, and he also rules over the part of the earth of Saxtomp. And both of those are, you know, basically... Uh, connected to, I'll just put it that way, the Aether of Maz. So, okay, so you're along with me for the ride. Now let's start putting it together, okay? So if you're like me, hang on, let me grab a little drink of water here. You may be wondering, are these numbers down here that are in the calls in any way connected to these large numbers of servient angels associated with these zodiacal kings who have this authority over different parts of the earth, right? So the large numbers in the call, when you're trying to open up, work with Enochian, are they related to the numbers of servient angels that these zodiacal kings have? And the answer is, Yes, <laughs> but let me back up and explain to you what, what kind of a question that is, right? So, you know, the, the question I had really was, is there a basic way to add up some of these numbers and figure out if they are, you know, some, if these numbers are like a sum of these numbers of zodiacal king servient angels. And like a fool, I tried to do that by hand. <laughs> and I did not get very far because it's frustrating. I have 91 of these numbers, right? How am I going to figure that out? Well, the answer is I didn't. I What I figured out was this is too big of a problem for me. And I took a beat and said, how am I going to look at this? So the answer is, I looked on Wikipedia, and I figured, I discovered this name of a problem. It's known as a subset sum problem. All right, All right so I somehow stopped the recording. So yeah, the subset sum problem. Okay, so the question is basically, if this, just take this idea conceptually, right? If I take a bunch of numbers and I throw them in a bucket here or I threw them in a box, let's say, and I just, you know, went like that, you know, the question I have is then if, can I pull out a bunch of different of those numbers? Let's say I only have 91 in here. Are, is there a solution where if I add up all of these numbers, so these these numbers here, they're all obviously numbers, but the dots are each representing a number. So the idea here is, is there's a bunch, you know, I don't know if I have exactly 91. If I do, then I should be guessing more, you know, doing more guessing games, you know, for a living. But um, the idea here is if you did that addition, would you get to a given number, right? In this case, let's say, let's just throw a number out there, 25,243. If I were to pull, put a bunch of numbers like this one, toss them into a bucket, would they add up to that? Well, the only way to know is to actually add up those numbers by hand, do kind of a brute force method thing. But it turns out that if you have 91 of these <laughs> numbers, that's hard. So like a fool, 
I started out um, just adding them up directly, but instead I realized after researching the problem, it's known as the subset sum problem. And uh, in so doing, I said, okay, well, how is it solved? And the answer is computers. And so I plugged that in there, right? So this is just the same deal, you know, I don't even know how many numbers to choose out of 91 to get to this, to, to get to any given total. Some of those large numbers I showed you at the beginning, but I used Excel and Excel worked. I got one solution to one problem, but then I'm like, boy, that take, took forever. And I tried LibreCalc and that was way faster. So smiley face to LibreCalc and the people who calculate, who uh, programmed it. So I got some solutions. So just to prove that this is a solution here, uh, 20, uh, oops, 2630 plus 2346 plus 2360 equals exactly 7,336, okay? So that's the solution to call 18. Similarly, and by the way, I'm showing this one to show that there is, in the aether of Paz, let me see if I can find it to here, there is a 2360. And up in Lil, it turns out that I had written 2306. It's 2360, all right? 2360, serving angels under the zodiacal, zodiacal king zing gen, okay, here. So, but regardless, there are solutions to these five calls, including the beast of 69,636, which as it turns out is the exact number of uh, Servian angels in the Aether of Lil, Zip, Pop, and Rye, okay? So these are big numbers, and it turns out that if you get these 12 numbers exactly, you get that. And it, once again, Zingjin and Levevov each share one. Now, I wanted to point out a few things about here. There's a reason why I kept on writing down the names of the uh, zodiacal kings here. Because each of these solutions to these five numbers has with them Levevov. Oops, oh well, no one doing that one. <laughs> uh, Levevov, Levevov, Levevov. Let's see here, uh, Levevov. This one, Levevov, is necessary. It's not one of these or situations here. And then here again, we have either Levevov here, if you just want to satisfy yourself with that, that Zodiacal King Levevov, or even if you didn't like, if you wanted to use the alternative and just the Aethers of Lil, you still have Levevov here, okay? Which is not the case for all of these. Arfeolge, for example, not in each of these. Arfeolge is the zodiacal king of Pisces, not there, okay? Levevoth, 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 okay? And Levevoth. So those of you paying attention might have remi remembered that I said that all of these zodiacal king uh, kings have a, a seven-letter name because seven is very important in Nilkian except for Levevov, right? And it's funny because when D, I'll just as an aside here, but when D was writing this down, he kept on writing it like this. And I'm just, I am not making this up. You can look at this. And then he just sort of put an H, in, or made the H really small like that. Like, what are you doing, dude? What's wrong with, you know, why, why are you in, you know, I'll, you know, I could even like make it bigger, like L A V A. V O T H. <laughs> All right. It wasn't quite that bad, but it's somewhere in between these two things. Okay. So I always thought was that always struck me as odd, right? Like if it, if it ends in V O T, then why are you even writing the H? If it ends in V O T H, make the H the same size. But you can see here, it's almost like D is starting to write the first seven letters and the angels are like, nope, add in the H. He's like, well, fine, you know, I'll put it in there, but I really don't want to, right? And, you know, there are certain languages where the T and the TH sound are the same, but not in English, not even in ye olde you know, English, right? Not even early modern English, which is what G D was speaking. 
Um, so what's the deal with this, right? He didn't want to have an eight-letter name. He wanted to keep the seven. But if you know your Hebrew, you'll know that the word El is the name for God, right? And it turns out that in Enochian, the letter L doesn't mean God, but it does mean the first, right? So, and this sort of reminds me of, um, uh, you know, uh, Shema Yisrael Eloah Eloheinu, the hero Israel, the Lord thy God. But they also, there's this, you know, in both Hebrew, you know, the call to worship in Judaism, and there's a similar one in Islam, where they have, they talk about the oneness of God. Hero Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. And in the Muslim version is, it's like one is his permutation, one is, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I don't have the exact quote because I was not raised in either of those faiths, but I'm just pointing out that this this letter one, or this, this letter, which could mean either God or it could mean one or maybe both, uh, would has sort of makes this whole thing stick out. Otherwise, you have a nice Avevov, you know, you have a nice seven letter name. Instead, it's Lavevov. And I don't know how to explain that, except to say that I was given um, a whole idea for another. Uh, table of practice, a holy table of practice, using the zodiacal king names and the letter L, I left off and I put in the center of it. You know, I was, I was, um, you know, as inspired slash instructed. Okay, so I'm putting all of that out there to just point out that this is kind of interesting, right? So we have five solutions here, but wait, those of you who are paying attention would know that there are. Um, actually more than that, right? There were more than those numbers here. So instead, let me find it here, da -da 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 -da, bear with me. Okay, so here's some near solutions. I think there are five, maybe six, I don't know. Maybe I had six up here and I'm forgetting one. What are these? Here. Man, I'm becoming that guy, aren't I? Okay, so three, 18, three, and then five so i guess i'm just gonna... anyway oh well sue me <laughs> i you know nobody's perfect anyway here's some near solutions okay i probably i i have this in the article up on my website so near solutions right zoom in here a little bit by zoom i mean hold the, the camera closer um so the number is six thousand three hundred thirty two there was a near solution when i ran the fabulous libra calc 6,333, that's off by one. 1636, the closest one was 1617, difference of 19. 3,663, closest I came to was 3,660, difference of three. 5,678, the closest was 20 away at 5,658. And 7,699, Closest one was seven away. Oh, wait, that number seven again, right? And I also mentioned the number 19. And the rest of these add up to 24. Okay. So if you add up all of these, you get the number 50. Now, you could do, do it either way, you know, do it the other way and say, well, if it's negative 19 and negative 20, and then add this, then I need to come up with this. And you get a seven times four figure. But if you did the absolute value, Said one plus 19 plus 30 plus three plus 20 plus seven is 50. Now I'm going to do a little advertisement here for billhydric.com and apologize for my sloppy handwriting. Obviously there's less room here, but Bill Hydric has done a really good job doing a, basically kind of an OTO style analysis of the of numbers right so and really he's not just that but he's he's done a lot of building on you know the basic kind of hermetic kabbalah that we learn um and instead that you know i learned anyway you know as an up-and-coming magician and i'll put in the word there so you know what it is kabbalah and there's different ways it's spelled depending on the connotation given to it um but regardless 
Bill Heydrich has done a good job not only doing like kind of hermetic Kabbalah, but really getting more at the actual Hebrew words and phrases. And he's found all of those Hebrew words and phrases, and he's done what's known as gematria, which is a form of numerology, where you take the the letter uh, and take each letter in the Hebrew alphabet, assign that a number, and then you add that up and you come up with certain values, right? So the ad, the number 50 is associated with the word, uh, with the letter noon, but it's also, I'm going to just reverse transcribe this here. It's also mem yod, okay? Because mem is 40. Come on, put it right there, the letter E, there we go. And 10, right, which is 50. Which, if my Hebrew pronunciation is correct, would be pronounced me, but that means who, okay? It's not English, it's Hebrew, but that means who, okay? So suffice it to say that that's a very important number in Kabbalah. You know, 41 and 50 are both very important numbers. I did a little, a few other side calculations here, just if you're really interested. So if you add up the numbers associated with each of the aethers here, you either get 47 or 50. So I showed you what happens if you if you do that and then take like a grand total, you either get, you know, 228 or 235, because I realize I made a mistake here, depending on whether you do use the first eighth or little here or the fourth, you know, just don't worry about that. But this is sort of like an exercise that you can do. Okay, <laughs> that was a lot. What's the big picture here? Well, Imagine you are a 16th century Englishman or, you know, you're in England. Let's put it that way. Whether or not they consider you English is another story. Dee was considered Welsh, even though I think he always spent his, spent his whole time in London, um, as far as I know. But in fact, I'll go ahead and turn the camera around for this part. <laughs>